Next on our list, a uh, stock we've talked about a bit already in the context of the show, and of course it's one of South Africa's best global companies, SAB Miller. Manufactures and distributes beverages, including 200 beer brands all over the world. That's as a consequence of lots of acquisitions as well as brand developments locally. Some of the big ones we've mentioned already, Peroni, Nastro, Zuro, those are European beers. Miller, Genuine Draft, that came with the acquisition of Miller. Grolsch in Europe as well, as well as all the local brands that everybody is dead familiar with, like Castle, Castle Light, Miller Light, etc., etc. Headquartered in London, market cap and dual listed in London, but market cap here, if you add it all together, of 1.1 trillion rand. Price to earnings ratio 26 or thereabouts, dividend yield 2.3. So, Chris, I guess the question is, they've got all of that stuff going on, got the Miller thing, got the China snow thing, which is very exciting because it's not that many branded consumer goods companies that have got such exposure over there. Huge African footprint. The Coca-Cola bottling thing on the side. Lovely company, lovely management team. Is it in play or isn't it? Is this a company that's going to be part of someone else's agenda or is it going to be making its own way? This conversation has been going on for about at least the last five years now. Mm. It was a, a beer institute meeting in Milwaukee, I think it was, about five years ago, that uh, said, uh, yeah, this has to be the next big thing. In fact, probably the last big thing. Because if Anheuser-Busch InBev does buy out SAB Miller, then it's really game over, I think, for the rest of mm. the brewers out there. Because then it becomes probably the largest consumer group company anywhere in the they world. They might as well call the combined business Mega Beer or something, you know. Yes, Mega really Beer, yes. <laughs> So it would be a great pity from our perspective if that happened, I think, because I think we already have a looser association with SAB Miller because it's, as you say, it's listed in London. Mm. It's no longer a South African company. Mm. Um, about 70% of the, the shares are held by uh, people from outside of South yeah. Africa. And yet, top management still very much South Ten African. Clock, yeah. So there's, there's very much a flavor there. Mm. If it were to be absorbed into AB InBev, and let's, let's not kid ourselves, AB InBev has twice the size of this company mm. in terms of uh, market capitalization. Mm. And in terms, of, although in terms of volume brewed, the, the gap isn't nearly as big as that. Okay. Um, so yes, is it going to happen? I, I fear it is going to happen mm. at some point in time, and uh, perhaps sooner rather than later. Because if it was ever going to happen, it's going to happen now, because interest rates are at global yeah. historic lows since the Egyptians built the pyramids or something. Yes. You can go and borrow a boatload and another boatload of money to pull off deals like this. Then they could put it all together. And the argument would be, less it doesn't matter if we're big, because we're competing with other forms of drink and bottled water and you know, people that manufacture other things. So give us a break. Let's go. They would do a certain amount of disposals. They'd put it all together. It makes sense to me. If they did do this deal, though, would it be at a price substantially higher than this level? Would we get a nice fat premium offered? I'd say 25 to 30 percent higher than this. Well, then we should all be buying these shares immediately at once right now. We must be very careful, Paul. <laughs> you must never buy stocks purely predicated on uh, possible Absolutely corporate right. action. Absolutely yeah, you've got to right. buy them on the fundamentals. Thanks for reminding me. I got a bit carried away. <laughs> <laughs> But so look, I mean, the <laughs> fundamentals with SAB are great. They're, uh, they're fantastic. In mm. my, again, in my humble opinion, this is the best company that ever came out of South Africa, by far, by a huge margin. Hmm. That's quite a compliment. Huge margin. It is a great company, and it's, it's proved its worth by establishing that massive footprint all around the world. It's got a better geographical footprint mm. than any other brewer has ever had, or probably mm. ever, ha ever will have. And I must say, you know, my son's 21st birthday was over the weekend, and I can tell you, those boys drank a lot of beer. It was astonishing. They drank it all, and once the beer was finished, they started working their way through all the other South African breweries' products, you know, like the Brutal Fruits and all that other rubbish. <laughs> it's astonishing. <laughs> and then we had to send somebody off to the Shabin to go and buy some more. They drank all of that, too. Yeah. And it doesn't look as though that stuff's going out of fashion anytime no, no, soon. No, 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 no time soon. Hmm. Okay, good. That's it. Quickly. Distel. We said we'd talk about Distel. Are we Remember, not hot or not? Yeah, we're definitely hot on this one. Yeah, good point. Hot, hot. Thank you, Chris. <laughs>